All right, well, two hours ago, Google launched an iBeacon killer platform called Eddystone. But unlike Apple's iBeacon, Eddystone is open source, or at least most of it is. Ron Amadio is reviews editor for Ars Technica and joins us now to talk about Eddystone. Welcome to you, Ron. Hey, Mike. Great to be here. I'm so glad you're here to talk about this. Now, before we talk about Eddystone, can you first talk briefly about what beacons are generally and what they're for? Uh, yeah, Bluetooth beacons are little, uh, usually battery-powered boxes that you could stick in a store or at a bus stop or something. And they uh, send out information to smartphones usually. And smartphones will then do something with this information. So uh, at a bus stop, you might get like, uh, bus times, or at a store you might get, you know, coupons or promotions or something like that. And uh, it's, they're low power, and the idea is that they kind of quietly show up on your phone, and it's a way to send a user location-specific information when they need it. So building on that, is, is Google trying to go into stores with this technology, or is it for some other mobile strategy? Uh, yeah, uh, sure. Stores, uh, you know, they have, they have Google offers where uh, some of the people that worked on this were from that. And uh, they, you know, have Google Maps, so they would love to be able to pull in uh, all of this transit stuff, you know, exact real-time subway information when you're at a subway uh, or bus stop or anything else. They, they just kind of want to uh, put this standard out there and kind of let everybody build on it, and they can build it into Android and and have iOS libraries for it and stuff like that. Now, our understanding of beacons has been heavily informed by what Apple has done. And the way iBeacons work, iBeacon, the iBeacon platform works, is that it's a cheap thing. As you said, it runs on a battery. Uh, it can be like a watch battery. Uh, and it simply broadcasts, in the case of iBeacon, a unique identifier. So that if you've got an app that's designed to work with iBeacon, it basically says, okay, if I'm getting... A, a ping from this identifier, it must be, uh, it must mean that I'm in the shoe department of Macy's at so-and-so, and here's some information about shoes. Um, in the case of Google's project here, they're doing much more than identifiers. You, uh, you mentioned that Eddie Stone supports multiple frame types. What's a frame type and what types of frame types uh, does, uh, does Eddie Stone support? Uh, a frame type is kind of the data payload that the beacon will send out. So iBeacon and Eddystone will send out the universally unique identifiers, uh, which require an app to open. So Apple made iBeacon in like 2013, and their, you know, the motto back then was, there's an app for that. And if you're in Starbucks and you're a super loyal customer, you might want to have the Starbucks app. For, but for other interactions, like say you're in front of a soda machine and just want to buy a soda, you don't really want to download the soda machine app. So uh, besides the IDs, it can send URLs, which will just pop right open in a web browser and you can use it and interact with the device without needing any kind of an app. Uh, the other frame type in there is uh, an ephemeral identifier, which sounds uh, really interesting. So uh, this is a secure beacon that can only be read by authorized users. So if you've ever played with like a Motorola Keylink, which is a little uh, a little thing you attach to your keys that will ping your cell phone when you lose your keys and you can kind of find it. This is like a standardization of that where you could use it to find your keys or your luggage specifically and only you would be able to read uh, that data payload. And the other one is uh, telemetry information. So if you're a big company and you have to manage a million of these things, uh, this frame type will send you uh, battery information and, you know, where the beacon is exactly and, and stuff like that that lets you manage a huge, like, you know, room or warehouse or whatever full of these things so that you don't have to, you know, go from one to the other and individually check battery levels and stuff like that. Hey, Ron, a three-part question for you. Um, first up, I've, I've heard Eddie Stone described as open source. Uh, so part one is, do you, do you truly believe it's open source? Um, and part two of the question is, that does that mean it can be cross-platform? Or is this like locked to Android, for instance? And then part three is, what vendors are going to line up and support this? Any names yet? So is this thing open source? Is it cross-platform? And are vendors getting behind it? 
Uh, yeah, so the it is cross-platform. That's probably the biggest deal. Uh, you know, especially when you're trying to pitch this to companies, if you're Apple with iBeacon, you're basically saying, we're not going to work with half the U.S. market. We're not going to work with 80% of the worldwide, you know, Android market. And even when companies have gotten iBeacon up and running on Android, Apple usually comes along and says, hey, this is our thing. You need to shut this down. So being able to run on on Android and iOS will be a pretty big deal. Um, as far as open source, the uh, the blue the Bluetooth beacon standard is open source. Uh, so the kind of the code that goes on the beacon software and sends out the data, all of that you can see the code for. If you want to use this information, Google has uh, proprietary ways to do so that kind of increase the user experience a bit. Um, this is the the nearby API. So so they've standardized they standardized the beacon side of things, and they want to standardize the client side of things with the proprietary uh, nearby API, which takes care of uh, reading the frame packet data and 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 listening for these Bluetooth beacons and all this other stuff. So developers can just say when I'm next to this beacon, do this thing, rather than try to figure out all this weird backend stuff. So it's it's a lot like the the Android and Google Play services model, where the the kind of platform is open source, but if you want to make the best use of that platform with the best user experience, you also need these little proprietary bits from Google. Uh, but if you want to roll your own solution and and kind of remake the nearby API, if you're like Amazon or somebody, you can do that. Uh, it would just be a little bit harder. And uh, what was the other one? The vendors, any vendors are lining up to support it? Yeah, um, so I actually talked to a hardware vendor from uh, Radius Networks. Um, they, there's like four or five different beacon companies that are signing up with this. Yeah, there's the list. Um, so the the hardware is nice because you can have a single piece of hardware that supports iBeacon and Eddystone and another open source protocol called uh, Alt Beacon. Um, the only downside really is that you can't transmit both at once. So you could either flip it to iBeacon mode or flip it to Eddystone mode. Um, but uh, other than that, you know, you can you can get a single box and play around with this stuff, and they're as cheap as ten dollars and go up to you know however waterproof, bomb proof you want to make these things. Uh, but yeah, they they seem to have they seem to have everything. They've got the platform and APIs and hardware partners uh, happening. So it seems like they're actually going to turn this into something. Well, so far, this sounds like something for developers and big companies and retailers and so on. But let's talk about the uh, the computer or mobile enthusiast uh, angle to all this. You mentioned that this would be supportable by Google Now. How might that work? Uh, Google Now is kind of going to use it as like a, a like a super accurate form of location. Uh, you can use GPS for a lot of this stuff, but it doesn't work indoors. It doesn't really work if you're in a crowded area. So like if you're in a city on the street, it doesn't know if you're in front of the bus stop or at the bus stop on the other side of the street or in the the business that's, you know, right behind the bus stop. But the beacons are precise enough where they'll give you this exact information. And Google now will use this to surface to the most relevant card. So, you know, you'll get the bus stop card when you're at the bus stop, not within you know, a thousand feet of the bus stop and you'll get the restaurant uh, menu when you're actually in the menu. And yeah, they want to use it to to not just pull up cards, but also get uh, real time information about, you know, the exact area that you're in. So, uh, you know, bus stop transit times and, and subway train times and stuff like that. You know, it's a quick question I have for you, which is that when iBeacon came out initially, there were a lot of reports that it was cross, cross not cross platform, but that you could use an Android phone to, you know, with the appropriate app to use an iBeacon uh, provided by Apple, even if that was being sort of pinged. One of the benefits of iBeacon is that uh, iPhones and, and tablets and other Apple hardware can actually serve as beacons. Uh, but nowadays, it seems like they're not cross platform. And, and this would be a huge advantage for this uh, for for Eddystone because it is cross platform. What do you know about how usable iBeacon is uh, if for somebody with an Android phone? Uh, the it's Bluetooth, so I mean, 
all of these are Bluetooth. So really anybody can listen to them. Um, but uh, the company that had made the cross-platform, it was like the iBeacon on Android library. Uh, they were an iBeacon partner and Apple came to them and, and kind of said, hey, uh, <laughs> if you want to continue being an iBeacon partner, you're going to stop making this library. So <laughs> they, they just kind of shut things down and were like, okay, fine. Uh, so technically it's totally doable. Um, it's, it's not supported by Apple out of the box. You, you're kind of going on your own. The big advantage to this is going to be that it's uh, Google's going to build it into Google Play services, so it's going to work on every Android phone out there that runs like Gingerbread or higher, which is Android 2.3, so like really, really old versions. And it, and it's going to be and Google's going to have a library that works with uh, iOS apps that you can include in your app. So you know you can go the difficult route and make iBeacon work on Android. But it's super hard, and this is easier. <laughs>